Daniel. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about Spartan, but if any, I cannot see the chat window. So if anyone has questions, please uh, uh, feel free to interrupt. Uh, so this talk is about a new family of ZK snarks called Spartan. Uh, before I actually dive deep into Spartan, I'm going to highlight a few distinguishing aspects of Spartan. First, it's a family of ZK snarks without trusted setup for R1CS. Uh, it achieves uh, sublinear verification costs for arbitrary non-uniform computations. And it's the first work to achieve that property. Uh, it also features the fastest prover among general purpose proof systems. And it also provides shortest proofs and verification among ZK snarks without trusted setup. Finally, the main ingredients in this construction are the sum check protocol and polynomial commitments. Uh, in particular, the information theoretic component uh, features a linear time prover uh, with logarithmic verifier and proof sizes. And the cryptographic assumptions for the construction are uh, in inherited directly from the polynomial commitment scheme, as well as uh, the costs associated with the overall construction. So before I uh, go deeper in uh, unpack this uh, material, I'm going to recall what a ZK snark is. I'm going to quickly recall this because uh, many of you are familiar with this. Uh, so it's an argument of knowledge. So meaning it's a protocol between a prover and a verifier where the prover wants to prove the knowledge of some witness uh, for some NP statement by producing a proof. For example, uh, uh, it wants uh, given a circuit C, it wants to prove that it knows uh, some secret witness W uh, such that uh, uh, running the circuit with the secret witness and some public input X uh, produces one as the output. It's zero knowledge, meaning that uh, the proof hides the secret witness. Uh, uh, it, it does not, the proof does not reveal anything about the witness beyond what's implied by this statement. It's not interactive. Uh, uh, finally, it's succinct. There are two forms of succinctness. One is uh, the pr proof size is sublinear in the size of the circuit, and the verifier also runs in time sublinear in the circuit size. There are many approaches to build ZK snarks, uh, uh, going back to the works of Killian and Michali. Uh, of course, these are uh, extremely expensive to use because they rely on short PCPs. Uh, a seminal work in this result of, uh, is uh, GGPR, as we all know. Um, they provide uh, ZK snarks for arbitrary non-uniform circuits. Uh, and uh, more importantly, they achieve near optimal asymptotics with good constants. A well-known problem with this construction is that it requires a per-circuit trusted setup. The setup is trusted because the trapdoor used in the setup process must be kept secret to ensure soundness. This problem has motivated another class of works called ZK snarks without trusted setup, and there are many constructions here. Some of these constructions even achieve better performance than GGPR-derived schemes. Uh, but uh, there is one uh, limitation with uh, the schemes listed on this slide, which is that these schemes can support arbitrary circuits or a succinct verifier, but not both. For example, Hyrax uh, supports the data parallel circuits in a layered form, and it achieves a succinct verifier for such circuits. Uh, but when it uh, wants to prove statements about arbitrary circuits, it would incur linear time verification costs. Similarly, Stark uh, achieves succinct verification only for uh, circuits that can be expressed as a sequence of repeated subcircuits. On the other hand, uh, schemes like Ligero, Aurora, and Bulletproof target arbitrary circuits, but uh, they did not achieve a succinct verification. In contrast with these works, Spartan can simultaneously achieve uh, succinct verification and can support arbitrary circuits. It turns out that uh, achieving succinct verification for arbitrary circuits is pretty challenging because first arbitrary circuits by definition have no structure. Second, the verifier must actually know the, uh, the statement that's being proven. What this means is that verification must be at least linear in the size of the circuit. So Spartan gets around this problem by having the verifier pre-process these circuits, but without using any secret trap doors. So the verifier retains a cryptographic commitment to the description of the circuit, and we refer to this as a computation commitment. 
pre-processing incurs cost linear in the size of the circuit, but this uh, pre-processing is reusable. It, uh, the, the, the reusability is very similar to that of GGPR. And uh, follow up works refer to this uh, process as uh, leveraging holography. So in the rest of this talk, I'm going to uh, present some background material and then I'll provide an overview of Sparta. And finally, I'll conclude with some performance results. Does anyone have any questions so far? Um, I, I had a question that I guess is not directly related to Spartan, um, but um, you mentioned Stark's um, uh, work on uh, constrained circuits. Um, if you were to add something like the permutation argument of Planck to Stark's, would that be able to support arbitrary circuits? Uh, when you say permutation argument, are you going to pre-process the circuit? Uh, so, so basically, um, in Starks, um, you essentially have polynomial constraints in a similar way to um, what you have in Planck. Um, and if I understand correctly, the thing that is missing um, to, to be able to just translate a Planck circuit into an air is um, support for copy constraints. Um, yes, but I, uh, but also the case that when you transform from um, some uh, uh, circuits to uh, uh, something that Stark could support, you should do this in a manner where the, repeat, the circuits are repeated. There is some structure in the computation on which the proof system is applied to. But if you don't have such structure, then you have to pre-process the circuit to uh, create a commitment and then the prover proves some evaluation of the commitment. Uh, the proof generation time. Maybe you can do that with permutation argument, but in general, you would need to pre-process the circuit and prove some evaluations on those commitments. But, uh, but I mean, you can have um, what in Planck are called fixed wires. You can do the same thing in an air, um, and that essentially allows you to simulate a, an arbitrary circuit. If yes. You have but, well. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. You can always uh, simulate an arbitrary circuit using uniform circuits, but the cost of doing that could incur like thousand times overhead on the proof generation time because the uniform circuits in general are much more verbose than uh, uh, non-uniform circuits. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so in the rest of this talk, I'm going to first provide some background material, then I'll provide an overview of how Spartan works, and then I'll uh, present some performance results. Um, well, well, I think yeah, maybe it's worth it. It's sort of what Dara said is uh, similar to uh, what Pratush asked in the box is, uh, does the fractal uh, also fall in this uh, intersection of no trusted setups, a sync verifier, uh, uh, or, or is there a, some separating feature of Spartan uh, versus Fractal? Uh, no, there is, uh, I guess, I guess uh, Fractal also falls into the same category, uh, but uh, uh, there are some asymptotic and concrete performance differences. I'll come back to that in the later part of the talk. Uh, So at a very high level, uh, the, the core uh, component inside Spartan is the sum check protocol. So it's an interactive proof system for sum check instances uh, for statements of this form where T is some target value and G is some multivariate polynomial in say L variables. I'm not going to go into the details of how this protocol actually operates, but I'll provide a quick structure of how this protocol, uh, uh, how this protocol is actually uh, run. Uh, so the protocol proceeds in L rounds, where L is the number of variables in the multivariate polynomial. In each round, the verifier sends one random field element to the prover, and the prover responds with the O of D uh, finite field elements, where D is the degree of G in any variable. And then uh, in each round, B performs O of D finite field operations. And then at the end of the sum check, the verifier must evaluate this multivariate polynomial at a random point chosen by the verifier over the course of the protocol. So this uh, protocol does not immediately yield a ZK snark without trusted setup uh, for several reasons. 
details, which I'll come to. But first, let me highlight some uh, advantages of this protocol. First, it requires uh, no trusted setup. It's public coin, so it can be made non-interactive with a random oracle model. And the prover can actually be implemented in linear time uh, if G has certain features, uh, which, which it turns out that it is the case for, uh, uh, the, for its use in the Spartan protocol. Uh, what this means is that the prover, the, the prover does not need to perform any FFTs or any super linear operations. So the number of, uh, uh, the total number of operations that the prover would perform is O of N uh, finite field operations. Of course, as I mentioned, there are some gaps for constructing ZK snarks from the sum check protocol. The first one is we must encode R1 CSR, uh, some NP complete problem uh, as sum check instances to begin with. Second, the protocol is actually not succinct. The main reason is uh, uh, the verifier at the end of the uh, sum check protocol, it must evaluate this polynomial G. So I'm going to uh, go into details of how Spartan addresses both of these problems. So first, uh, let's recall what uh, R1CS is. So given three public matrices of size M by M, does there exist some secret factor Z such that uh, this relationship uh, depicted on the slide holds? So uh, to encode uh, such R1CS instances as some check instances, what we do is uh, we view these uh, matrices as well as the witness as some functions. So for example, uh, Z is a vector, so we are going to uh, vector of size M. So we are going to uh, view it as a function uh, from S bits to a finite field element. And similarly, we can view ABC also has uh, uh, two S uh, mapping two S bits into a finite field element. So the first S bits would select a row, the second S bits would select a column, and it would output the value that's present in the matrix. And then we can uh, uh, extend these functions to multilinear polynomials. Uh, and these, uh, what I mean by extension is that uh, the, these unique multilinear polynomials would agree with the function over the Boolean hypercube. For example, the Z tilde of Y equals Z of Y for all Y in uh, 0 comma 1 S. Uh, it's the similarly A tilde, B tilde and C tilde satisfy similar relationship with A, B, C respectively. Now, uh, a key uh, lemma here is that um, there exists a special function f that evaluates to zero over the Boolean hypercube if and only if the R1CS instance is satisfiable. Um, uh, so this is very useful, but this is not really a sum check instance because I cannot directly apply the sum check protocol to this particular f. So what, uh, what we do is we construct uh, another uh, uh, instance of the polynomial where uh, for all x, uh, uh, f of x is zero, uh, is uh, equivalent to checking this particular sum check relationship uh, uh, with f, where uh, e tilde is actually a special multilinear polynomial that evaluates to one if the arguments are equal and zero otherwise uh, over the Boolean hypercube. And there is some small soundness error introduced by this uh, uh, polynomial. Uh, so, so, in, so to recap, what we have done so far is uh, given a sum check, uh, given an R one CS instance, we have produced a sum check instance uh, uh, where uh, proving the sum check instance is equivalent to proving the satisfiability of the original R one CS instance, except for a small soundness error. So, if we apply the sum check protocol uh, to the sum check instance depicted on the uh, slide, the verifier at the end of the sum check protocol must evaluate five multilinear polynomials. Uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, uh, this E tilde can be evaluated in logarithmic time locally by the verifier. So, it's not a uh, problem. Uh, whereas Z tilde would depend obviously on the prover's witness. And the remaining three polynomials would depend on the statement. So, if the verifier needs to evaluate this, it either has to work, it has to incur computation proportional to the statement size for the last three polynomials, or and also receive this witness from the prover to evaluate the z tilde. So, Spartan addresses this problem. At a very high level, the idea is to employ an extractable polynomial commitment scheme. So uh, at the beginning of the protocol, the prover would commit to the Z tilde before the sum check protocol begins. 
then the prover and the verifier run the sum check protocol. And then after the sum check protocol, the verifier requests the evaluation of Z tilde at R by, where R by is chosen over the course of the sum check protocol and pi is the proof of correct evaluation of the committed polynomial. And then the verifier verifies this pi using the commitment and uh, uses this uh, supplied evaluation of Z tilde for evaluating the sum check polynomial G. And there are many polynomial commitment schemes in the literature. And uh, the main uh, takeaway here is that the size of the proof for the polynomial evaluation and the cost to verify are both succinct. So the verifier does not actually have to receive the witness. So it does not have to incur communication proportional to the size of the witness. Similarly, uh, we can employ an employ a polynomial commitment scheme to commit to uh, uh, A tilde, B tilde, and C tilde. These do not depend on the witness. So in a pre-processing phase, the verifier computes uh, uh, three separate commitments. Uh, and uh, as before, the prover commits to Z tilde before the sum check protocol begins. And then the prover and the verifier run the sum check protocol. And at the end of the sum check protocol, the prover sends to the verifier as evaluation of Z tilde as before along with the proof. And now the prover also sends three evaluations along with three separate proofs. And the verifier would uh, verify all the four uh, proofs against their commitments and then uses these evaluations in the uh, computation of G, the, the sum check polynomial. So this almost works. Uh, 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 actually, before I go, uh, we refer to this uh, three commitments as computation commitments because they encode uh, commitments to the structure of the computation. Uh, so this almost works, except that uh, these three polynomials are sparse polynomials. In particular, A, B, C are sparse matrices. Uh, in practice, the number of non-zero entries uh, is linear in the number of rows in the matrix, but the total number of entries in these matrices is quadratic. So if we apply an existing polynomial commitment scheme, uh, the prover would incur quadratic costs both for creating commitments to these uh, sparse polynomials as well as for producing evaluation proofs. So the prover uh, cost would be quadratic in the size of the statement. So we address this problem uh, with uh, what we call Spark. So it's Spark is a cryptographic compiler that takes an existing polynomial commitment for multilinear polynomials, and it provides a polynomial commitment scheme for sparse multilinear polynomials. And there are two key ideas here. First, uh, we create commitments to dense representations of sparse multilinear polynomials. Uh, so for example, uh, if there is a, uh, a matrix like this on the left side, we're going to create three separate dense uh, multilinear polynomials, a row call val. Uh, and then size of these uh, dense polynomials is proportional to the number of non-zero entries in the original uh, sparse polynomial. In particular, the row and call polynomials encode the indices at which uh, uh, the non-zero entries appear and the val polynomial encodes the actual coefficients. Of course, there's no way to prove, uh, there's no uh, direct way to prove evaluations of such uh, sparse polynomials in this dense representation. So that's the, the second component in Spark, which is a protocol for sparse polynomial evaluation. In particular, there are two sub ideas here. First, we devise an efficient sum check instance for proving sparse polynomial evaluations. And it employs uh, offline memory checking primitives. And then we apply the sum check protocol with polynomial commitments for this specific problem. So in summary, uh, what we have done is we have taken an Arvansis instance and turned it into a sum check instance. And then we apply uh, it, the sum check protocol together with the polynomial commitment scheme to obtain an interactive argument of knowledge for R1CS. And then using extended compilers like the fiat Shamir transform and zero knowledge transformation, we can get a NISIC for R1CS. Then we combine this NISIC for R1CS with computation commitments to get a pre-processing ZK-SNARK for R1CS. 
this computation commitment obviously relies on a polynomial commitment scheme for sparse multilinear polynomials. And then we use the Spark compiler to transform existing schemes to uh, uh, polynomial commitments that can handle sparse polynomials efficiently. So we have implemented this uh, uh, Spartan uh, uh, polynomial IOP with multiple polynomial commitments. First, we implemented this with the polynomial commitment scheme that's present in Hyrax. It relies on the D log problem. Uh, there's another scheme that we call COPIS. Uh, it uses a multilinear adaptation of BMMVTV19, and it uses SXDH uh, assumption. Uh, then there is Kyphos. It uses the Dory polynomial commitment scheme. Finally, there is Cerebrus, which uses a scheme that's implicit in Ligero. Uh, and it, uh, the only assumption it relies on is uh, collision resistant hash functions. Uh, one thing to note here is that all of these schemes require random oracle assumption for non interactivity. There are also other polynomial commitment schemes that we could build in the future. Uh, first, our recent work describes a scheme that we distilled from D the BCG20, it provides better asymptotics for the prover. Uh, then there's uh, the Virgo polynomial commitment scheme. It provides better asymptotics for the verifier compared to Ligero PC. There is dark, but uh, it turns out that Dory dominates uh, dark on all, in nearly all aspects. Finally, there is also schemes uh, based on KZG and PST13 that requires a trusted setup that could also be used with Spartan. Srinath, you have uh, three minutes. Yes. You have three minutes left, sorry. Okay, thanks. So uh, I, I just have a quick uh, performance uh, report, uh, uh, but there are many other details in the papers uh, that I linked from the beginning of the presentation. So there are three takeaways here. First, uh, Spartan offers the fastest prover among all the schemes that we measured. Among the schemes without trusted setup, Copis offers the shortest proofs and Kyphos provides the fastest uh, verifier. Among post-quantum secure schemes, which include uh, uh, Cerebrus and Fractal in this slide, Cerebrus offers the fastest prover. And, with, and finally, as I mentioned, uh, there are detailed performance comparison with other schemes and uh, uh, other instances in our papers that you can look at. And with that, uh, I can take other questions. Thank you so much, Rinath. Uh, just a quick applause from, in the name of everyone. <clears throat> Are there any questions for Srinath? Uh, we have maybe time for one, two quick questions. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Uh, can you jump back one slide, uh, the comparison of the performances? Uh, so under what, uh, under what, uh, let's say, uh, assumptions you compare growth 16 with Spartan? So, so which, uh, which polynomial commitment scheme do you use here for Spartan? Uh, and in which curve, uh, just for, as an example between growth 16 and Spartan, because I don't understand the table. Yeah. Yes, so sorry, I did not uh, go into those details. So, so in growth 16, it's based on uh, BN256 curve uh, as implemented in LibSnark. Uh, Spartan uses curve 25519 as implemented in curve 25519 Dalek. Uh, so, it's the restrictor 255 curve. And uh, these R1CS instances, uh, there are million constraints. And, uh, they're and the commitments, all over sorry. sorry, the commitment scheme for Spartan. Spart which commitment scheme yeah. to the, did you use here? Yeah, so the, here it uses the Hyrax polynomial commitment scheme for the first line, uh, the Spartan, which is uh, labeled Crypto20. Kyphos uses Dory. Coppice uses a scheme based on BMMTV. And Cerebrus uses a scheme uh, uh, based on Ligero. Thank you. One Thank last, you. one last quick, quick question. Anyone? Okay. So again, thank you so much, Srinath. Uh, this was an excellent talk. Um, 
there was a very, very active chat. So if you stay, if you tag along if, and you want to read a little bit through it, uh, they were very interesting conversations. So thanks everybody who participated. I'm um, going to stop the recording now.